Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I am in Lyons, Oregon to show you the installation of a double remote hydraulic kit on this Kubota tractor. We're going to be installing two complete hydraulic circuits. This is one kit, the other one's sitting there on the seat to power a flail mower on the back of the tractor. You can do lots of different things with this remote hydraulic kit. You can run one circuit to the back, one to the front, so you could run a uh, hydraulic top link and a grapple, or uh, really any implement you wanna hook on either end, or you can run both circuits to one end of the tractor. Today, that's what we'll be doing. Another thing customers do with a double kit all the time is run a hydraulic top link and hydraulic side link. I sell these on my website as well. You can get an absolutely complete package of cylinders and hydraulic controls for many, many tractors. Uh, check it out on my website, linked right below, tractorinnovations.com. This is absolutely the most affordable and easiest way to get remote hydraulics on your tractor. These kits come absolutely complete with every nut, bolt, and hardware you need, including the zip ties to finish the uh, installation up, brackets to hang these remote hydraulic couplers, and a bracket for no drill installation. These valves are gonna hang right here underneath the loader control valve. And with a double kit, there are quite a few hoses, but they all come color-coded for really easy installation. Stick with me, I'm gonna show you every step you need to know to install this on your tractor. This is going on a Kubota L3130. It is similar to a lot of Kubota L series and B series tractors, but I build this kit for lots of different makes and models. All the Kubotas, New Holland, John Deere, Coyote, Branson, all the brands out there, I can get you a single kit or a double kit to add hydraulic remotes to your tractor. First step to installing this kit is to put the mounting bracket up underneath the loader valve. For that, I've got my 10 millimeter socket ready to take those bolts out, and I'm gonna get this bracket in the right orientation. The slot goes towards the inside of the tractor, and before I put it on the tractor, I wanna get my long bolts out of the hardware kit and go ahead and slide them from the inside of the tractor towards the middle of this. So if you look, I've got the slot here and the bolts coming in from the inside of the tractor. Now I'm ready to mount this bracket up to these two bolts underneath the loader valve with a 10 millimeter socket. One good idea is to do these one bolt at a time. The other one's loose, but not totally removed, just in case this loader valve wants to move a little bit. Okay, I've got this bolt started. Now I'm gonna remove this other one. and reinsert it through that bracket. You might have to tug up and around on this plastic cover. All right, and this inside one, the bolt is so close to the edge, you will just need to use a uh, open end wrench to finish tightening that. The socket will not quite fit on it. With the bracket in place, now it's time to take the hydraulic valve kit and install it onto the bracket. Your kit comes with two complete hydraulic diverter kits. This one has the couplers sticking off the top, and I'm just gonna show you, this is the red and the blue. This one goes on the outside, so I'm gonna get the other one to mount on the inside. Here's our valve marked yellow and white, and you can see the couplers come off on a pair of hoses here so that it can sit up underneath that loader valve. So get your hoses stretched out and oriented with these elbows facing forward and down. And we're gonna just slide it up underneath the loader valve and onto those bolts. I've got all my hardware in a magnetic bowl here. So go ahead and grab a lock washer, regular washer and the two nuts and slide those right on to tighten up this diverter valve onto the bracket. And you'll tighten that up with a half inch backer wrench and a socket. Now's a great time to go ahead and install the knob. So I've got the lock washer on the knob and thread it right into the piston there. 
as I get it tight, this piston starts to turn. And if I want to give it one more little snug, I can grab a hold of this piston with a pair of vice grips, but I do not want to grab in here where this has to go inside the body. So I'm going to slide that down and I can grab just the very outer lip of that piston and give this knob just a little more twist. There we go, that's tight. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the hydraulics for this first inner kit before I move on to mounting the outer kit. That's just gonna give me a lot of room to move around and maneuver. Before you disconnect any hydraulics on your tractor, take a minute with the engine shut off and move this loader valve to all four positions. Just be careful, things could move, but you really want all the hydraulics to settle. I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, three point and lower it all the way down. If you've got other accessories, including a, like a third function, turn your key on and move those electronic buttons. We just want all the residual pressure gone. Do this right before you disconnect things, because even if your tractor's sitting in the sun, that can heat up the hoses, heat up the oil, and, and create a little bit of pressure. Definitely wear glasses during this step. If any hydraulic oil were to shoot out, you don't want that in an eye. So this first diverter kit is white and yellow. That's your lift circuit. So we're gonna disconnect those one at a time. I'm gonna start with the yellow, that's in the front. I've got the output hoses from the switching valve marked white and yellow. And I'm gonna go ahead and thread this yellow one under. If you'll take your time here, you can really end up with a professional looking routing and have a really clean install. So I'm gonna disconnect my yellow from the tractor and pop it right onto this yellow mail that comes from the switching valve. Now, I'm gonna go find the hose that supplies into the switching valve, marked yellow, and again, take my time, route it neatly, bring it right up here and plug into that yellow. All right, halfway done with the lift valve circuit. Let's do the same thing with the white. I'm going to route this mail up here, disconnect coupler and bring it right down here to connect to the other mail. Okay, supply line into the diverter valve, marked white. And that's it for hooking one of your diverter valves into the loader circuit. Now we'll mount the outer blue and red diverter valve for the dump circuit. We'll plumb it into the loader lines and then we will all at the same time run all four of those hoses under the tractor. Repeat the steps of the inner valve on this outer valve. So slide in your bolts on with the valve. Washer, lock washer and nut. Connecting the hydraulics is even easier on the red and blue. Again, before you disconnect anything, just make sure there's no pressure here. And we're gonna disconnect this coupler and bring it right over here to the switching valve. Blue to blue. And I've got a hose coming right out the top to connect back. There we go. Repeat for the red. Bring it right over to the male coupler here and take the supply hose right back to the loader valve. With a little time and attention, you can really get a neat routing here. And our connection to the loader circuit is complete. Now we're just ready to take these long remote hoses and run them to their final placement. These could go to the front for a grapple, or uh, two of them could go to the rear for a top link, or all four to the front, or all four to the rear. This is a moment when you've got a decision to make. If you're running forward for a grapple, you're gonna want the red and the blue, the dump circuit, to run that grapple. The way that will work is when you want to run the grapple, you'll set your dump angle at a convenient spot, pull that knob, and now you'll have lift function and grapple function at the same time. If you need to adjust that dump angle later, pop the knob in and uh, go right, left, adjust your dump angle, pull it back out, and you've got your grapple function. So front, 
generally goes on red and blue, the dump function. On the rear, the lift function really works well for a hydraulic top link because you're rarely ever running the loader and the top link at the exact same time. A bonus you get, is especially with a hydraulic top link or uh, sometimes people with a offset mower on the back, you can throw this up into the float position and whatever you've got hooked to the rear is gonna be able to float with the terrain. I will get these hoses run under the tractor and we will install these in the brackets on the rear. For routing the hoses, I'm gonna take my time and find a really good routing. I don't want them underneath all of this hydraulic stuff, more exposed to damage. So I'm gonna slide them right under the floorboard here, above these hydraulic things, but here in a really protected space. At the back of the tractor, I've got the hoses run up inside the roll bar here above the axle. And I can take a minute here and just make sure nothing's binding up, that I don't have them all twisted. They look pretty straight here. And I'll pull them out here by pairs. So the white and yellow still go together. The red and the blue are gonna stay together. And I'm gonna try to find a mounting spot here on the back. You've got this breakaway clamp that has a metal bar. The two hole end is going to attach to these W brackets to hold onto the couplers like that. Single hole end is gonna go on the tractor. With this toolbox here on the back of the 3130, there's some nice bolt holes that's gonna make it really easy to put those couplers right here at a convenient spot. So with a couple washers for spacing in there, we're gonna be able to put those on really easily. Before I go mounting this on the back of the tractor, I'm gonna take these W brackets over to the workbench and put them together, which makes it so much easier to put on the tractor. To pre-assemble these W brackets, I'm gonna pull all the hardware out of this packet. and take the smallest bolts, these are quarter inch bolts, drop them into the outside slot, with the little lock washer, the little nut, and just put it on there just far enough that it won't fall off. Repeat for the other bolt, lock washer and nut. Okay, I want lots of flexibility here to put those on the coupler, and then I'll tighten them down. All right, I've got my brackets ready to go on the tractor and a bolt. So I like this solid mounting spot on the back of the tractor. If you've got a different tractor, you could clamp over here to the rollover protection, to a brace, to anything really. But we've got this nice hole in the bottom of the toolbox. I'm gonna slide my two brackets on there. And then I'm gonna go on with a washer, lock washer and nut. I've got all the rest of my nuts and bolts here in the magnetic bowl, and I'm gonna place these couplers into the bracket. I'm gonna start with the red and blue, keep them paired up just like this. Get just enough slack there to slide this bracket over the coupler. Do that both sides. You should have about a quarter inch of this coupler sticking out the outside. And tighten up those nuts on the outside, just finger tight just so the couplers don't fall out. And now we're gonna take it back and put it onto the mounting bar. Now you've got options here. This bracket can sit below, above, or straddling this bar. Since we're trying to maximize space between these, I'm gonna put this one below, and I'm gonna drop the bolt in with a lock washer and nut on the bottom. Repeat for the second bolt. All right, now we just need to tighten up these bolts. A good test before we finish is just to look at these hoses and make sure they've got room to slide a little bit. As we connect and disconnect these couplers, the inner sleeve and this whole hose has to be able to slide a little bit. It looks good, so I'm gonna tighten it up.
and we'll repeat the process for the second set of couplers. I don't love these brackets. We've got a new design coming out very soon that will make this a whole lot simpler. All right, the installation is all complete and we just wanna test these couplers before we leave the back end of the tractor. Here I've got one of the male couplers that comes with the kit. I happen to have it on a hose for this hydraulic top link and I'm just gonna push it in and pull it out of each one of these couplers to make sure the hoses aren't binding or anything else is not uh, out of place. So to connect, simply shove it in. That's fully connected, but I love these couplers. If you happen to forget to disconnect something or a branch gets in here, it's gonna pop that loose before it damages anything. That one connect or disconnect. This one doesn't wanna go. Let me just make sure there's nothing in the way. A good way to check and make sure there's no pressure is to push in on those balls inside. Let me just make sure there's nothing wrong. It should connect. There we go. If you have one that's sticky, a little lubrication on that O-ring can help it push past that uh, point. Okay, those all look good. Well, there you have it. The simplest and most affordable way to get remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today, we built a double kit on this Kubota to run a flail mower, but you can install this double kit for one in the rear, one in the front, all sorts of different implements. Lots of customers install this for a top and tilt. You can get a complete kit with hydraulics, both cylinders, top and tilt for a Kubota tractor on my website. Check it out right below, tractorinnovations.com. While you're right here, take a minute to like this video and subscribe to my channel. That helps lots of other people find these great ways to improve their tractor. Thanks for watching and stay tuned here for just a second. I'm gonna show you several different ways of using this double remote hydraulic kit. Now let me show you how this kit works. With the knobs both in, I have standard control of the loader. Lift, dump, everything as usual. But when I wanna work with the rear, I'm gonna set the loader up out of the way, pull both of these knobs, or I can do just one at a time. But with both of, the, of them pulled, now both loader circuits control these rear remotes. So. I'm ready to mow. With this kit, you get control of both remotes from the one handle. Your hand is in just a regular position you're used to using, and it's really convenient.